institution. Uh, somebody was asking my deputy uh, a month a month into our takeover, uh, they went to visit the deputy and they were asking the deputy if it is something real bad to the president for which the president had to send him to NTA. Because they know he did not do anything bad. It's just that the president feels and knows that he has the requisite skills to help transform the institution. There is no vehicle. I mean, there's no administrative building, so I'm not, I was not too surprised when we saw that there was no vehicle. Currently, a deputy for operations uses his motorbike to go to work, to and from work. My deputy for administration also uses his pickup, who pick up digest down to go to and from work. So as in within the within the three hundred thousand, now that we got to know we needed more than three hundred thousand to put those buses outside. And we found out that there was no electricity when we took over. The compound was depending on the neighborhood current. So even when the, when LEC was on, the, 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 the amount of power that was going into the compound was not enough to put things on. So we met um, employees moving outside the fence to type letters. And every other thing that, uh, that was linked to documents preparation was done outside of the perimeters of the National Transit Authority. So we negotiated with some vendor. In fact, it was almost like a crime to come for NTA, go to any vendor business to talk about getting uh, an item on credit. Immediately, they asked who's the person, where's the person from? They say NTA. They say, we don't want to see you here. If you don't want trouble, uh, basically, that's how, that's how the business community they have been treating NTA. And I don't hold them responsible because that's how the past people treated the business community. So it, it was a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough time for us. And I think I will comment, I will comment the commerce minister. So we had, we had a discussion and we're discussing the problem. And he said, look, I mean, she talked to somebody, the person will give you at least a 20 kPa generator that you will use to solve some of your problem. But remember, you will have to pay back. I agree. And so a week after, the deputy got there and he got the 20 kPa generator. So that's how we got power back into the National Transit Authority. We begin payments on that on that uh, generator, and everything that we are doing, we are doing it on the five buses we met there. Everything that we are spending, that I'm talking about, that we we put into place preventive maintenance so that the five buses who are trying to put additional buses on the route, we cannot lose the the five buses. So what we are raising from running. Those five buses are what we are using. We have made the first payment against the generator of the 3,000 plus. At the end of this one, we make the second payment and then subsequently the last payment. So since the generator is 20 kVA and as the only person in the whole Republic of Nigeria that could bring NTA a lot of credit, we took the 20 kVA. So in this 300,000, we factor in a 100 kVA generator to help the repair process and a pickup a pickup to allow the technical people respond to breakdown. So that's 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 constitute the three hundred thousand. And uh, PBCC have granted us the right for the spare parts. We are set up bids for the pickup and the generator. I think by the twenty eighth of this month we'll be opening the day to give the contract out for the supply of the generator. And the generator and the pickup. 
while we are while we are doing that, we have already planned. We came up with some of our strategic plan. We're still working on it anyway for the next five years. What we want to see FTA look like based on the charter that was amended. We have a lot of things that we could do. So we started discussion with some group. Uh, sometimes people talk about NTA is about to receive 300 buses. So that's, that's a group we call Marco Polo. Marco Polo is a Brazilian company. And they have their sales representative from West Africa in Ghana. So they met us and expressed interest in working with us and providing 300 buses over a period of three years. But that's not a brand. <clears throat> that is not a brand. What we normally receive from India is a brand. So that 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 proposal we we it come with a lot of package. We got the bus terminal, we got the uh, ride bus, cashless, cashless movement, we you got your car that you put in and make your payment and all those sophisticated technological uh, gadgets they have to install on those buses. So that whole package for around 70, 70 million dollars. I told them we have to study it. We have to study that and see as to whether we can go with that or we can modify under, under this arrangement when the, the revenue envelope <coughs> looks so small and there are a lot of entities coming on that. Then we got another group, uh, APK International, that want to do business with us. Similarly, that on brand, we have to pay back. And they told us that we can provide the buses that we want up to 100 buses. And then after one year, we begin making payments. So we are also studying all those investment proposals at the same time. We have contacted the uh, the Chinese embassy, we wrote the Chinese embassy and uh, the Indian embassy to have audience with them and see how we can partner together and solve some of the transportation problems in the country. A few weeks ago, we we got a call from Alliance Moto, an invitation to visit Alliance Moto. So, we responded to the invitation, and during the discussion, uh, Mr. Haddad informed us that they are officially negotiated with Tata India to be the sole dealers of the buses, of the Tata buses. But they were still concluding on the modalities to sign on the agreement. So he wanted us to know since we were the bus company and using the Tata. So we had a discussion and to him we were hoping, willing to work along with him. And then just two days ago, he called to let me know that Tata has offered him three buses currently in Agriculture. And then I told him we were getting interested and see how we can work around what we receive for the administrative building that I made a case on the legislature sent for me to discuss our budget. The I made a case for MTA and they had some pity on us and promised us that we were going to do something. And uh, now that the budget has been signed, I will try to see what they did about it and how they did what they did about it. And then we can start negotiating that. Because currently, currently we have an emergency. We have an emergency. Um, the uh, police, um, the, the motorbike union, agree on some restrictions. And the restrictions started yesterday, but was said that uh, the movement of people to and from work was slow. So yesterday, we out of the 29 buses while waiting for the pass, the 
we prepared three of the 29 buses in addition to the five that we had already. So eight. So um, operations uh, people put three of those buses out yesterday. At least to help reduce. Help reduce uh, the mass movement of people walking. So that's the National Transit Authority. Uh, the story is long. The story of the National Transit Authority is long. So I think you even know more of the stories. So I will want to start here and then you will now ask me some of the questions that you know about the National Transit Authority. Thank you so much for your deliberation. Uh, a few days ago, uh, one of the civil society organizations, uh, NAMO Partner, uh, came out with a report uh, about the government 100 days deliverable. And they talk about some of the things that the government did not achieve during the 100 days. Do you care to comment or is the report in your interest? Thank you. And number two, um, on the National Unification Day celebration, um, some critics are saying that uh, it was just met for only government officials and uh, fortunately I was part of the problem as well. Uh, we did not see uh, other opposition leaders uh, did you write some opposition leaders in the to attend the program? And if you did, why you think they did not attend? And uh, my my question go to Mr. Ford. Thank you so much. Um, you talked about you made payment to two contractors. Um, you made payment to two contractors in the absence of uh, the budget. I want to know where you took the money from before you pay these uh, people. And my my second concern is, uh, Mr. MD, are you also concerned about the the streets or the road that these buses normally plow on? Uh, because sometimes the lifespan of these buses rely on the kind of a road they plow on. Thank you. Thank you, my name is Simano Bokolo, and I am from Versailles, and all right, okay. So MD, um, I believe that the president appointed me because he believed that he was capable of transforming um, the, uh, that, that institution. But all I could listen to you was crying, the place is vulnerable, and all of that. Is it like you can, you know, transform the area? But it, and it is so. I didn't listen to you, you know, giving a clear roadmap how you actually transform the area. Are you willing to do that? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is James M. Bala, and I report for Unitor Africa in my county. MD, I heard you speaking to us in regard to uh, repairing the old buses. The nine pieces according to you, five was active. And since you took over, you did not tell us uh, why you are making new negotiations of new buses, 300 with these companies, how much cost, how it cost the old government or the old, new, or old buses, how much the total cost from where we come from, where the Indian government, or where we come from, how much was the total cost that the biggest government spent? before you are making negotiations with another company. Thank you. 
My name is Bolivre. I have a question for the MD. Uh, talk about trying to fix one of the bosses so that I need to add to the bag of fact. My question is, Silver Side Joseph has some bosses. Sometimes the bosses will also pack in the empty yard. Are you going to have a wish for a top power talks with him to see what I can put the bosses back on the group because they can say, I mean, since the stopping of the motor plan, uh, the girl can't go for passenger that we have. Are you going to talk with Silver Joseph for the bosses? Thank you. So we have three. The MD can answer the MD from today. Oh, right, okay. Last year. Okay. My guess Moses will be in the right for the news. Uh, my question goes to the MD. Uh, the few buses uh, that are currently useful, I mean, why are they currently using them? Uh, I mean, in which county? We are from one county. Uh, we don't see any of them there, so I want to know where are they? Okay, thank you very much. My name is Kura Tomsi, and I record for the Chube Independent Radio Newspaper. I have just a question, and it goes to Mr. Simon. So we're coming to the Library of Constitution, um, Section 9.1. We state public officials and employees of government shall not receive, not encourage the giving of any form of graft or cash and gift in connection with the performance of his or her official duty, whether himself or herself, or members of his or her family, or any other benefit that includes have any influence or his or her professional approach to issues and the discharge of his or her official duty. Don't you think by the president writing a private jet letter from Ghana here is a violation to this constitution? Thank you. Thank you. Sister, please come. Sister, come. Is that a constitutional call of conduct? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. A call of conduct. Yeah. Thank you. So now I too. All right, so sorry, I didn't get all the news, but I got the question. I think the first question was uh, Wretty, right? Wretty. Wretty. Wretty talked about two contractors. I never said two contractors, I said two sets of contractors. The first the first were seven persons, and those those seven persons contract were terminated by past administration, but they did not pay them off. Are you getting me? They gave them part of the money, and the balance that they were owing them was nine hundred and eighty-eight thousand Liberian dollars. So we settled that. The second set of contractors were fourteen. That we met them, that we terminated the contract and paid them off. That's two million seventy-one thousand. Uh, let's see that. I mean, that the red dollars. That's the concern. Road condition. Yes, we are concerned. We are concerned. There's a lot of problem with the tires on and off the side of the road. So when when the when the, the Japanese were building the Japanese freeway, they consulted us. We went along with them, air mark, bus stop. So you see, some part of the road is indented. And that, 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 that dented portion of the road will allow the bus to park. So we are concerned because it affects the tires of the buses. The second question Are you able to transform? Yes, I'm able to transform MTA. Why? I was with MTA. When NC was the only government institution that paid its employees every two weeks, we instituted that. As established the internal audit department at the National Transit Authority. And I became the first risk management and compliance manager, reporting directly to the board of directors of the National Transit Authority. 
when I'm told you like this, I know what MTA was before. And I went and see what MTA is. You get transformed. MTA is not just to the ground, MTA is under the ground. We are living from under the ground. This is why in two, in two months, 16 days, we were able to solve all of these problems. And without more, we will solve them. So we are capable to have a capable team to work with. Very capable team to work with. And we rebound NTA. The cost of the buses. The cost of the buses we met there was donation. But donation have cost. So I, I hope the accountants that were there at the time, the cost of those buses. When we were there, the buses that we received from India, one of them was 72,000. Like the United States dollars. So if you receive 40 buses, you get one to cut plus them by 72,000. I was not there when they received this. I don't know what's the cost of the Tata buses. What we received at the time was a short million buses. St. Joseph. St. Joseph is a private businessman. I don't have any authority over what St. Joseph does, but does not. Sir Joseph got his buses. How? I don't know. What he intend to do with them is none of my business. Except, except if I waste some portion of the library, Lord, fine. Then we come. I can go to Sir Joseph and tell Sir Joseph why he's not putting his buses on the road or not. It is the responsibility of the government to support the National Transit Authority. So the National Transit Authority can carry on its mandate to the library people. Where are they running now? Yes, so we have we have routes. We have political routes. We have profitable routes. Right now where we are, we are looking for money to solve problems. So the five buses, we kept them on the Lima route. So if you are from Bon County, once you keep Bon County on that way, you see the little buses passing every day. While we're drawing them, we're drawing, we're drawing three now to come back is to help solve some of these problems from, from here. So all the, all the things we say, okay, say, yes, I was not letting you. But we have to solve the problem. That's why the woman said, well, there we go. All the people responsible. The people who we pay, we were not the ones that put them on contract, but we have to take the responsibility to solve them. So we have to process on the routes to Lima. I think that was all the question. Morris went to. Yeah. So there was a question that the budget had not yet passed. Where did that? Where did we get the money from to solve the problems I'm talking about? I said we were managing five, we met five buses. In two months, 16 days, we ran those five buses, and the proceeds that we generated from those five buses, we solved problems with them. Okay. Hope that is explicit enough to address a concern. What is more of Morris. 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 The government, the Liberian public, has received what now will publish. It says their own assessment of the president's 100 day delivery room. The first thing we have to say is that the whole thing about 100 day delivery room is an offspring of the government. The government is the custodian, is the implementer of what portion of the actionable plan that was executed in the 100 days, which we call it delivery room. Right? So the government will speak to the press. The government will speak to the press on the president's 100 day delivery room. We are working very closely with the MFDP. They provided funding for all the projects. So in matter of days, you will hear from the government on the 100 days. 
But the government also appreciate that civil society organizations will follow what they do. But what the government will also require of those civil society organizations is to be very accurate in what they say. Because it borrows on the repetition of the government. Why was released by now? We don't know where they gather the information from because some of the things we have seen on the list were not included on the president's 100 day delay rule. But this is not any way to say that we don't appreciate what they do, but we also require that they be very angry what they say because if the, if the, if the, if the government releases the actionable plan and why we achieve on that tomorrow and you compare that with what now have published. There's a very big variance, and so I don't want to delve into it. I we don't understand it is inaccurate, but we cannot we cannot say they shouldn't do what they do. They do what they do for because they have obligations to their to their so, I mean their private donor. So they did that work. But judge the government on the basis of what the government released to you. And again, ask every member of the press to just be a bit patient. The government will do that as maybe in a matter of days. So this whole thing about who scored this one, who scored this one, can be put to bed. Uh, you talk about our critics. What was the second question? One more, one more is. But our critics say the unification day was square for government officials. You know, people will always be where they want to be. The government can take It's not a job of the government to force opposition to the attempt program. The government, as a representation of the people, the Liberian state, organized a national event. All of the people you consider main opposition figures, they were invited. But if for reason best known to themselves, they decided to come to the program, should the government cancel the program? They can cancel the program. It was a state event organized by the Ministry of State, Ministry of Information, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Portugal Division, handled invitation. They printed the invitation. They invited these people. Why they chose Harold Khan is a subject of contextual. We can't cancel the program because somebody who thinks that the country should not move, should not make progress because they are not president, is not there. They do that. So, to satisfy your concern, they were invited, but they elected not to come. And this speaks to a greater extent about the mindset that they have. Don't forget now, the past administration never organized any occasion for unification day in this country. For six years, the entire concept of national unification and integration was downplayed. So today they see a government that is very responsible and is very concerned about the historical past of this country, a government that is concerned about the future of this country, organizing a unique occasion that the unification day. They say we can't go there because when we're there, we didn't do it. Well, between we and these people, the way we manage the country will be the law of demarcation. We don't want to play politics with anything. We do believe that this country has been through a lot. Unification is about being united, coming together. And this was a day set aside by the forebearer of our nation to say, let's celebrate national unification and integration. He listened to the vice president when he spoke. He delivered a very electrifying oration. And we went further and we caution members of the ruling establishment to be very open to criticism. Because that's the only way we can make progress as a country. So, for them to come there, it is not for us to see. 
but we had an obligation to organize the event and we did so in keeping with our duty to the Nigerian state. Well, the generation asked a question about Brad. Where is he? Brad, 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 Brad. You want to read that portion of the code of conduct you read? Yes. Please read it for me. So section nine, section nine point one states, public officials and employees of government shall not receive nor encourage the giving of any form of bribe or casual gift in connection with the performance of his or her official duties, whether for himself or herself or officials or members of his family or her family or any other benefit that could have any influence or his or her personal approach to issues and the discharge of his or her official duties. Okay, thank you. So, the, the chapter of the Code of Conduct very clear. It's a public officials, any individual, cannot. Did it say the Republic of Liberia cannot get favor for and sister of the country. This is, this is a country to country arrangement. When the president of the country is going to another country, in the country that requests your presidency, Liberia has limitations in several aspects. We have limitations. Other countries have stable economy. They have stable electricity. They have better roads. We are a country that is lacking in every aspect of social and economic advancement. So if the president of the country is requested to go on a bilateral trip to assist other country, Liberia does not have a private jet, and that country has a private jet to be the president with facility of travel here. And you call that bribe. You call that bribe. So the two scenarios are just similar. The law is referring to individuals the president is making representation on behalf of the Republic of Liberia. Guinea-Bissau is a country within the community of nations. Liberia has got a diplomatic and bilateral relationship with Guinea-Bissau. If the president of Liberia is going to attend a meeting in that country, which one do you prefer? And the Ministry of State should spend money to buy a ticket for the President and his delegation as opposed to they getting on a flight to go free of charge? This thing about everybody wanting to, to be heard and criticizing the government, you have to be logical sometimes. You can't try to be so naive that even when good things are happening for your country, it's all oh, it's okay like this. And the bottom line here is that people want the government to be our government. The person did it, did it too, so no difference. It's not true. Look at the current budget. I was summoned by the president when he returned from the United States. When the Ministry of State was receiving millions of dollars to the nine, 30, 40 million. This budget, very simplistic. They reduced the Ministry of State and roughly for 29 million to 9 million. You think that the president won't ride private jet? The president, the budget comes from the executive, they reduce the environment on the first day. For how many million? To I think 200,000 or 300,000. You think that the president won't ride private jet? Because the budget is a representation of what the government will do for the country. If this government can cut down the expenditure of the Ministry of State, from, from a whooping to the 9 million. To 9 million. Cut down travel costs. I want the opposition to say, I don't believe it. You say, I don't believe it. It is a president who will buy private who will buy a private jet. So the first explanation I gave, it has to define our advocacy. If the president of the country goes 
in a quiet or private jet for his, for his personal use, it is a problem because it costs the country a whole lot. But when the Republic of Liberia is invited to a bilateral meeting, and that meeting, that trade is being facilitated by a sister of the country, that's wrong with it. So you who are the critics, you have to choose. You are simply telling us that you want to come to the peace spending money on foreign travels as opposed to saving it. Because that's for example. The president came from Liberia to the United States for the US Africa summit was paid for by the Ministry of State. The president traveled from the United States to Guinea Bissau to Liberia was set up by a sister in the country. Which one do you prefer? And the bigger resources we have our country will use everything on foreign travel in a name of now going to be seen as right private jet. People be logical sometimes. So the president does the right thing, the government does the right thing. If you don't have anything to say, just shut up. You don't have to criticize everything. Matthew, be close up. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sando. I think the logic is simple. If I invite you to my house and I say I'm going to send a car for you, I don't know whether that will be that will amount to bribery. So I think the logic is clear. But thank you very much. Uh, distinguished media colleagues, uh, we always appreciate the presence uh, at the Ministry of Information Regular Press Briefing. Uh, today is Thursday, I think we will adjourn and reconvene next Tuesday. Uh, at the end of the day, Priscilla, who is the Assistant Director of Press and Public Affairs, will, will have a final word with you. So thank you very much. Thank you to our brother, Noah Sam Gibson. And his voice, and he's still from the, the NTA. We congratulate you in trying to work us a steady journey in trying to relieve the stress from our people because the new regulation now concerning motor bikes is causing you know, some constraints for our people in terms of travel. For the fact that you have to be the for three to be the bus is on the right to get some news. So thank you very much. Appreciate what you have to do. Thank you everyone and I'll give you a proceeding.